worldwide. Hello everyone, I'm TG and I'm here to talk to you guys about the amazing online experience that is Evil Dead the game. Today I want to show you guys a build that I have been using for Miss Ruby and if you don't know, Ruby is probably one of if not the strongest characters in the game. She's definitely the best leader in my opinion and the reason for that is there are so many different ways you can build her and her abilities are just to die for. What I want to focus on today is a build that is all about damage. Now even when it comes to damage with Ruby, there's a couple ways you can play it. You can uh, put her into the ranged category. You can put her into the melee category. Today, I want to focus on melee, but as you'll see by the tree, it's really easy to just swap that for ranged if that's your thing, or even create a hybrid of melee and ranged. But today, we're just going to focus on melee. So let's dig in. As always, what I'm going to do is show you guys where I spend my points, tell you why I spend them there. If any number crunching needs to be done, I will do that. And I'm also going to show you guys some clips in game of this build in action so you can see it before you use it. So to start things off with, we are opening up our tree with that one point integrate influence kind of a waste, but we have to do it. That's going to increase the range of our aura by eight meters, which you're not even going to really notice. And then we're going to put one point into Artful Dodger, which is the standard for pretty much any class that you're playing, because that's going to reduce the stamina cost of dodging by 15%, and you don't need that extra point to make it 20. And then we're putting two points into Deep Pockets Ammo, because as a leader, it is your goal to pick up all the stuff that you can to share with your team. And this is going to increase the max ammo you can carry by 15, which is a kind of big deal. Next, I have three points into Industrial Strength, and that's going to chonk you up with a maximum health increase of 20%, which is second only to the support characters. Then, unfortunately, I do have to put one point into Deep Pockets Matchsticks. That's going to increase the matchsticks you can carry by one, which is kind of useless, but I want to get deeper into the tree. Now... Light therapy is kind of controversial. This is going to increase the speed that fear lowers in lit areas two points, 25%. Now, a lot of people don't use that. They just use the one to get to fear no evil. But I like to have two because even though your leaders aren't really going to get feared that often, they're kind of, you know, obviously the best at managing their fear, especially if you're using your pink F. Whenever you do get that fear high, you want to get it lowered as fast as possible. And light therapy does make a pretty big difference. 25% is pretty big. And uh, you'll be surprised how often that kind of helps you. Plus, I did have a spare point to play around with. Moving on to what's probably one of the most important things on the tree. Three points into Fear No Evil. That's going to reduce the amount of fear you receive from anything by 20%. Obviously, that's huge. That's going to go really well with your pink F usage to pretty much bring your fear down as low as it can possibly go. Next, I'm putting one point into Season Survivor Basics and Season Survivor Elites. That's going to reduce the damage you take from both Basics and Elites by 5%. Nothing major there. But we do need those points because I'm going to put three points into seeing stars. That's going to increase the balance bar damage from your melee attacks by 15%. And then I'm putting a full four points. And it's unfortunate that it is now four instead of three. But four points into devastating force. That's going to increase the melee weapon damage by 15% across the board. And then I'm also putting a full three points into the last word. And the reason I'm doing that is because I like to use fast weapons. And this is really great with that. That's going to increase the last hit of your combo, making it to 50% increased damage. So that's how I spread out my points. I like to focus on melee, but if you like ranged instead, take all those points from the bottom, put them into the ranged abilities instead. You're going to see great results from that because how Ruby works with her passive ability, she is able to increase the damage of either melee or range depending on how you do in the match. So the more you kill in a certain way, the stronger that way gets. So that's why I said earlier that you can even go hybrid and kind of put your points into both melee and ranged, making you not as strong at one, but if you're smart throughout the match and you're switching up how you kill enemies, you can be a real powerhouse in both ways. So it's really up to you. Like I said, I like to go melee, but go your own way. Now let's have a fireside chat about her abilities. So her active is Lilith's Curse. When activated, Ruby gradually consumes the accumulated souls to charge her unique ability if deactivated or when she runs out of souls, you trigger a deadly blast that damages all the enemies around you and heals nearby survivors. So what does this equate to? Well, the cooldown is 60 seconds. The maximum charges you can hold are 70 and that's crazy if you get it up to 70 watch out <laughs> max damage you're going to be doing with this bad boy is 800 and the max health restored is going to be 500. However, keep in mind, whenever I talk about max charge being 70, that is after you put some pink F into it. So you're not going to start at 70. You are going to have to work up to that. But trust me, like I said, it is just a hashtag game changer whenever you do get it that high. Next, Ruby's aura is kind of uh, a complicated one. It's soul eater. So you regenerate health up to a certain threshold. And being a dark one, you can't use amulets, but you can absorb the souls of evil units that die within your aura. So anything you kill or your allies kill, and that will improve your aura's effects. 
Now, what all that means is that you're going to get a maximum stamina regeneration of 20%, maximum cooldown reduction of 25%, maximum damage, and max damage reductions of 20% as well. So this is actually one of the better auras in the game, and if you are really slick, you could even try some of the tech tree abilities that strengthen your aura, which a lot of the times are useless because you don't see a big increase, but since this increases so many things, it might be fun to play around with. I haven't done that yet, uh, but I suggest if you're interested, you do give that a try. Next, we have another overly complicated one, Anathema. So this increases the fear threshold and infernal energy cost at which Ruby can be possessed. Additionally, it reduces the damage taken while the possession ends and increases Ruby's soul eater health regeneration. So again, a lot of words, but what all that means is you get a 10% increased resistance to possession. The demon, it will cost them one more infernal energy per second whenever they are possessing you. And the damage taken when the possession ends is actually reduced by 75%, which is awesome. And then the health regeneration threshold of her ability goes up by 50%, which is a huge amount as well. And finally, the reason for this build is quick study. So killing an enemy unit with a melee weapon increases your melee damage, and killing an enemy unit with a ranged weapon increases your range damage. You're going to get a 1% increase to every enemy that you kill up to a max of 20%. So that means when all is said and done, if you kill 20 enemies with melee, you're going to do 20% more damage with melee. If you kill 20 enemies with range, you're going to do 20% more damage with range. That's why I say there are kind of endless ways you can customize her melee and range damage, because at the end of it all, you're going to have a increase of 20% anyway in the match if you are varying up how you kill enemies. So ladies and gents, powerful vaginas of all ages, that is my build for Ruby. Tell me what you think about it, what you like, what you would change, how you play your Ruby and why. I want to hear all that good stuff because she's one of the most uh, varied characters there are in the game and she's definitely one of the strongest and most fun to play in my humble opinion. Now, don't forget to stick around the channel if you guys love Evil Dead the game, because there's more builds coming soon, as well as some other goodies on the horizon. And as always, everyone, I am TG. If you like what you saw, you know what to do.